Good morning, all of you. Let us start analysis of 2015 bull cat 04. So let us start the session. It was an average paper. Easier. Now you can see the very first question. Yes, Bhavya. Uh, today I'll uh, spend a good time on AR. Rather, I'll explain three sets. Yeah, question number one. Any problem? That is a formula based question only. Yes. Yes, of course. Good. Very good. So let us move further. Question number two. Easy. If you go by options. Yeah. Any, any problem in this? Okay, Bhavya. Uh, let's see this question. See, I'm uh, not reading the question here. It says, what is the value of a square minus b square upon c square? I'm not uh, reading the whole question. I'm just going by options. See, in the denominator, we have a perfect square here. So, I'll take that option in which denominator is a perfect square. That can be the best candidate for the answer. As you can see, third option. Now, we know that if we take c as 2, c square will be 4. So, it qualifies the denominator thing. Now, coming to numerator, a square minus b square is equal to 5. Now, do we have any two perfect square whose difference is 5? Yes, we do have. They are 9 and 4. So, if we take a as 3 and b as 2, then the required numerator we are getting here. Now, I have taken by hidden trial, I have taken by using options, I have taken A, B, C's values, which are satisfying the basic condition. This was A factorial, I mean 3 factorial, into B factorial, into 2 factorial, is equal to A factorial, plus B factorial, plus 2 raised to power C, and this is the answer in this case. Is it okay, Bhavya? No need to manipulate the factorial thing. You just go by options. <coughs> yes, guys, is it okay, Bhavya? I think that was your problem, question number two. Okay, let us move further. Now, question number eight, very, very easy question. In previous bull marks, we had many questions of this type. Yeah, any problem in question number 8? If you have problem in any question, please write explain followed by the question number. Yes, Abhimanyu. It says if x and y are integers, it means we can consider 0. We can take negative integers. We can take positive integers as well. Such that modulus of x plus 2 modulus of y is equal to 100. How many different values can the ordered pair x, y take? See, what was the condition it was mod x plus twice of mod y is equal to 100. I am just removing the modulus sign. I am taking a simple linear equation and trying to write all the possible solution. Then we will put our modulus sign. How to solve a linear equation? First of all, you write a random solution for this. Suggest any random solution for this Abhimanyu? Any random solution you can see here. Any one of you? Okay, the random. I am taking 0 and 50. Suppose I have taken, yes, Shubhangi, it can be 50 and 25 as well. I am taking 0 and 50. Now, how to write other solutions? You take y's coefficient and x coefficient, which is 1 in this case. You just write these coefficient on the opposite sides. If you are putting a positive sign on 2, you have to take the negation sign on 
another coefficient. I mean, you take alternate sign. If I'm taking plus 2 here, I'll take minus 1 here. If I'm taking minus 2 on another side, I'll take plus 1 on another side. Now, plus 2 means you add 2 to 0. Adding 2 always, it will be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. As you can see, all the numbers are increasing. Now, I'm subtracting 1 from 50. I'm getting 49. Again, subtract 1 from 49. I'll get 48, 47, 46, so on up to. Now, you can see this is a decreasing sequence. Obviously, it will approach 0. So, what is the last solution I'm getting here? That is 100 and 0. Are you getting me or not? Yes, sabhi manu. Okay. Now, uh, I have taken all the possible solutions here. Coming back to our original equation, that was mod x plus 2 mod y. Now, if I take these many solutions, these many solutions, as you can see, we are starting from 1, then you have 2, so on up to 49. Each solution will give you 4 solutions in total. For example, if I take 249, Minus 249 also is a solution. 2 minus 49 also is a solution. Minus 2 minus 49, that is also a solution. So every solution in the pink boundary will give four solutions. How many solutions are here in pink boundary? They are 49. So 49 into 4. Corresponding to these solutions, which are consisting of 0, as if we take 0, 50, it will give you two solutions. 0, 50, 0, minus 50. Because 0 is a positive, neither a positive nor a negative thing. Now coming to 100, 0. 100, 0 as well as minus 100, 0. These are two possible solutions. So plus 2, plus 2, that is the answer in this case. Is it okay with you? Are you getting me, guys? I don't have a good voice today. So please cooperate. Abhimanyu, can you hear me? Please confirm. Okay, let us move further. So that was a solution which comes out to be 200. Now the next question, that is question number 11. Yes, Shubhangi. The three sides of an equilateral triangle are 2x minus y. The side length is given here, but it includes two unknowns x and y. So we will calculate the value of x and y. Of course, we are talking about an equilateral triangle and all the sides are same in this kind of triangle. So I am considering 2x minus y is equal to 3x minus y, y minus 1 is equal to 4x minus 3y minus 8. If we compare them, if I take these two equations equal, these two equations equal, or these two equations equal, <coughs> we'll have two equations in two unknowns. We can solve those two unknowns. We'll get the value of x and y. We'll put value of x and y. We'll get the length of the side. Since we know the length of the side, which comes out to be 9 in this case, we can calculate the perimeter of the triangle. Is it okay, Shubhangi? The main confusion in this question was the given things are lengths, not the equation of the line. They are lengths. 2x minus y, this is not an equation. This is a length. Okay, moving to next question. <coughs> what is the problem in this question? Question number 14. It is reported as a difficult question. Yeah, question number 14, any problem?
all of you uh, first of all let me complete all the difficult and medium level questions then i'll come to your doubts yes bhavya c is an acute angle it means less than 90 degree in a triangle abc and two identities are given this is 3 sin a plus 4 cos b is equal to 6 3 cos a plus 4 sin b is equal to 1 now we know that cos square theta plus sin square theta this is always equal to 1 theta should be same always in this case but we have a and b two different angles so i'm taking square of this and square of this to use this identity so let us take this square of this it will become 9 cos square 9 sin square a plus 16 cos square b plus 24 sin a cos b is equal to 36 similarly it will give you 9 cos square a now I'm, uh, squaring the second equation 16 sin square b plus 24 sin b cos a is equal to 1 now if we add up these two equations why are we adding here because we need cos square theta plus sin square theta if we add them 9 will be common it will become sin square theta plus cos square theta so it comes out to be 9 similar logic in the second expression 16 24 is out now sin a cos b plus sin b cos a the formula is sin a plus b is equal to 37 now 16 plus 9 is 25 we are subtracting 25 we are getting 12 here so what will be the final thing here the final thing will be sine of a plus b is equal to 12 on 20 uh, 12 upon 24 which comes out to be half now it is saying that c is acute angle now a plus b is its sign is half so a plus b can take 30 degree value but if we take a plus b as 30 degree the remaining angle c as we know some of all the angles in a triangle will be 180 degree always this is always true so if we take a plus b as 30 degree c will be 150 in this case which is not an acute angle so we will take the another value as we know that sine 180 minus theta is sine theta always so we can consider sine 180 minus 30 degree that is sine 30 degree only so i can consider that a plus b is not 30 degree rather 150 degree so if a plus b is 150 degree the remaining balance which is c angle it comes out to be 30 degree and this is the answer yeah any problem in this question bhavya no bhavya i don't have any idea about this i don't want to go into inverse trigo that is the easiest thing we can do in this you could go by options as well suppose i am taking of course c should be acute c should be acute if i take the answer thing if i take c as 30 degree a plus b will be 150 degree but a plus b is 150 degree the only combination which is easy and uh, whose sign and cause we know they are 90 and 60 that you can try in this question okay let us move yeah question number 15 We have a direct formula for this this is actually an old cat question kind of replica of an old old cat question whenever you have this kind of figure and you are asked the height of the intersection point let it be u let it be v this height will be always uv upon u plus v 
that is a shortcut we always use namit that is a case of similarity you can see the explanation have you seen that if you have seen that and still not comfortable i'll explain this otherwise we always use this shortcut a small one okay abhimanyu let us see two vertical lamp post of height 6 and 10 are 7 meter apart the top of each lamp post is connected to the bottom of the opposite lamp post by wire ropes at what height from the ground will the two wire ropes <coughs> cross each other now i'm drawing a perpendicular here now uh, the total uh, base length is given as 7 so i'm considering this as x and this is 7 minus x i'm just applying similarity here i'm taking this pink small triangle and this pink bigger triangle let the height is h here so if we apply similarity are you getting me abhimanyu we'll get h upon 7 minus x i'm taking the smaller triangle This will be perpendicular upon base is equal to six upon seven. Now, if we take another pair, suppose I am taking this triangle and the bigger one. They both are similar by the A A X Y angle angle. If we apply similarity here. We'll get h upon x is equal to ten upon seven. by solving these two equations we can get the value of x and h i think that is easy now is it okay abhimanyu okay let us move further question number 17 looks like a difficult question but very very easy it was yes yajur A rectangle and an equilateral triangle of equal area are inscribed in a circle of diameter four. There is a circle of diameter four. If you have a circle of diameter four, its area will be pi r square. It will be twenty two upon seven into four, which comes out to be eighty eight upon seven, which comes out to be approximately twelve point five square units. Is it okay, Ajju? A rectangle is inscribed in this circle, and dimensions are asked for this rectangle. Of course, if we are drawing a rectangle inside a circle, the area of this that rectangle should be always less than that 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 of circle. Can you say this? Now, if we take dimensions, of course, first option is rejected because two minus root seven, its square root is not possible. Similarly, second option is rejected because four minus square root of seventeen does not have any real value. Now coming to third and fourth option. If I take fourth option, since dimension of the rectangle are given, it means length and breadth are given. If we calculate the area of the rectangle, it will be sixteen square minus fifty seven its square root. Which comes out to be 256 minus 57 its square root, which comes out to be 199 its square root, which comes out to be 14 point something. How can it be possible if you are drawing a rectangle inside a circle, and area is more than a circle? That's why this option is also rejected. We are left with only third option. That is the easiest thing we could do in this question. or you can use the formula based thing that uh, we have explained in the explanation siddharth please be attentive see what i'm doing here we have a circle whose area is given i mean diameter is given as 4 so radius will be 2 so area will be by applying the areas formula area will be 12.5 <coughs> if dimension siddharth see Dimensions are given. I am taking the last option. Dimensions given are 16 plus root 57, square root of 16 minus root 57, length and breadth. 
what is area area is l into b so area will be the product of these things i am applying x square minus y square is equal to x minus y x plus y formula so it will be 16 square minus root of 57 it square <coughs> is it okay with you all of you so let us move further question number 18 Okay, very good. I'm skipping this question. Please be quick in responding. Yes, question number twentieth. How many rectangles exist so that the number of tiles of unit dimension on the perimeter are equal to the number of tiles on the inside? Any problem in question number twentieth? Okay. <coughs> Let the length be x and the width be y. Now, what is the condition here? We are putting unit dimension tiles here. So, uh, the condition given is. the number of tiles of unit dimension on the perimeter are equal to the number of tiles on the inside that is a condition which is given i'm not very good at drawing please cooperate now i'm taking the condition what is the condition given the number of tiles on the perimeter first of all we will calculate this these are y so these will be y so on the perimeter it will be 2y now the corner tiles we have counted that's why we are left with these x minus 2 tiles and these x minus 2 tiles so on the perimeter we have these many tiles any problem in this now this is equal to the number of tiles on the inside if the this is equal to the number of tiles on the inside we can remove the boundary that we have counted now if we take the inside square it will be this way inside rectangle sorry it will be the black boundary its dimension will be x minus 2 And y minus two, so the number of tiles inside is x minus two into y minus two, which comes out to be x y minus two x minus two y plus four. Now this is a simple equation. You can find the number of non non negative or positive integral solutions. Is it okay with you? Yajur, till the moment, is it okay? Then why? Okay, Abhi Mani, you see why are we multiplying here? If we have a rectangle, say, of dimension this, say three by four, <coughs> and we want to calculate the number of unit tiles I'm using here. In every column, there are three tiles, and how many rows are here? How many columns are here? There are four. so in total there will be 4 into 3 tiles we will just multiply the number of tiles here in a row and in a column is it okay abhimanyu <coughs> should i solve it further that is okay with you yes guys please confirm yes yajur it was your problem so it, it it will become xy minus 4x minus 4y is equal to or we can write plus 8 here 
that will be the equation in this case. Now we will manipulate this equation to find the number of positive integral solution. We can take x out. It will become y minus 4. I will try to make the same coefficient here. y minus 4 I am using here. See the y is coefficient. This is minus 4. That's why I am putting minus 4 here. It means I am adding 16 to this. So it comes out to be this way. Is it okay? Yes, all of you now. Now it will become x minus 4 into y minus 4 is equal to 8. Now you can split 8 into two parts and correspondingly you can find the solutions. That is the thing we normally do in integral solution type questions. Yes guys, is it okay? Should I move further? Yes, Shubhangi, I will. Of course, both are the same things. By taking both the things, we'll get the same answer. What is the thing here given? Perimeter is equal to interior. That is the thing given. Now, interior can be written as the complete area minus the perimeter boundary. Can you say this? So if we add perimeter here, it will become two times number of tiles on the boundary equal to complete area. What is the complete area in this case? It will be x1. That is the thing which is given in the solution. Is it okay, Shubhangi? <coughs> okay, let's move. Permutation and combination. Yeah, any, any problem in this? Yes, Bhavya. Normally, many of these students are not comfortable in PLC because it is all about logic. See, what are the conditions given? A, B, C, there are three persons. Five different books. These were the key words here. Five different books are to be distributed among three children, A, B, and C. Of course, we are talking about children, so all of them should be distinct. The next condition is A and B gets at least one book. In how many ways can the books be distributed? First of all, I'm considering that condition where C is getting zero books. So it can be this way or it can be this way. And the permutation and one, one uh, permutation of one and four and permutation of two and three. That I'll consider in one case only. If C gets one book, we'll get two, two, one. Any other solution we are left with? 3, 1, 1. These are the only possibilities we can take. I'm considering the permutations as well. So if I take the very first case, you have five different books with you. You want to distribute any one out of five to A that can be done in 5C1 into remaining four books can be distributed to B in of course, you are left with four books. The complete pile you will give to B. There is only one way. It comes out to B. But we will multiply this by two. Why so? Because it can be other way also. <coughs> Shreya, that I'll consider in one way only. No, Bhavya, that is not the correct way. Because we have a different word here. Now coming to this. Again, it can be written as 5C2 into 3C3. Now, what is 5C2? 5 into 1. Again, we are multiplying this by 2. Why? Because it can be other way also. A can get 3 books. B can get 2 books. Now, coming to this, that was the crucial part. First of all, you are dividing uh, among, uh, dividing uh, these 5 different books among piles. Suppose we are taking the piles of 2, 2, 1. That can be if you are aware of distribution, the grouping part that can be done in this these many ways into three factorial I'll do because it can be in, it can take anything. It can be two one two, it can be one two two, and so on. Is it okay with you? Ah, this is not a correct way because we have five different books here. In your case. Many cases are skipped and many cases are counted twice. 
Now coming to this way, 311. Please go through uh, permutation and combination advanced part one. Grouping I have discussed in that video because that is a question of grouping. We are making groups of five things and the groups are in uh, composition of 311. In 2, 3 factorial will take because these three books can go to anyone. Is it okay? These many things are possible here. I cannot consider 500 zero zero case because there is a condition given that A and B get at least one book. Is it okay? Yeah, any problem in this? Tarannum, Bhavya. Please confirm all of you. So let us move further. Question number 23rd. Any problem in this? It was a nice question on geometry. Mistake prone. He is a and Shubhani. What is the thing given here? A triangle is given. In A, B, C, D is a point on A, B. Uh, we are uh, taking randomly a point. T is a point on A, B. And E is a point on C, D. given the triangle BDE area 6 triangle DEA area 8 AEC area which is 10 and this is unknown this I'm taking as question mark we want to find this question mark value now if we talk about area of triangle ADE and triangle ADC. We know the area, so I can take the ratio. It is 8 by 10. Are you getting me? Since both the triangles have the same base, of course, area formula is half into base into height. Half is a constant which comes in every area. Base, bases are same here in both the cases. So the areas will be in the ratio of their height. So, it will be height of triangle, say, A, D, E, H, and it, it is H dash. Is it okay? Abhi manyo and shubhangi. Now, I'm taking the another section. Let me take D, B, E upon triangle D, B, C. This is 6 upon question mark with the same logic because both the triangles have the same. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yajur. Thank you so much, Ashima. It will be 8 by 18. So it will be question mark plus 6. Now you know the value of H upon H dash. You know the corresponding values. You can equate them. You will get the value of question mark. Is it okay? Abhimanyu and Shubhangi. Okay, let's move. Question number 25th. Again, a question of uh, number of integral solutions. Yes, Yajo. X is given as 12. So, if we solve it, we will get 1 upon Z minus 1 upon Y is equal to 1 upon 12. Further, if you solve it, you will get 12 times Y minus Z is equal to YZ. Again, a question of manipulations. Whenever you have this kind of thing, always try to factorize. 
For example, I am taking this. Y is common. Now, I want to factorize. I will make the same factor here. Z minus 12. See the same factor. What is the coefficient here? 12. That's why I am balancing it. I am getting 12Z here. The extra thing I am adding is <coughs> minus 144. That is the thing I am taking. Is it okay? Yes, all of you. Now this is easy. We'll get y plus 12, z minus 12 is equal to minus 144. Or we can take y plus 12, 12 minus z is equal to 144. Now there are two things whose multiplication is 144. We can write the various combination for 144. It can be 1 into 144 can be 2 into 72 and so on. So we can find the number of different solutions which comes out to be number of factors of 144 divided by 2. But please cross check one thing x and y and z as well they should be positive integers as always. So we'll reject those cases in which y and z they are not positive. That's why this is the answer. That is a normal technique we always apply in these kind of questions. I think in uh, in a question of perimeter of rectangle thing, I did the same thing. Yes, let us move. Yes, Siddharth. See what is what is the thing I am getting here? Y plus twelve into 12 minus z is equal to 144. If I take this combination 1 into 144, this is never possible. Why so? Because in that case, z will be negative. This is never possible. Is it okay? So this case is rejected. 144 into 1, is it possible? We will check. If I take y plus 12 is 144, <coughs> y will be 144 minus 12. And 12 minus z is equal to 1. So z will be 11. So corresponding to every factorization, we'll check whether y and z are positive or not. And corresponding to that, we will count the number of cases. Is it okay? We cannot take 12 and 12. Is it okay? Because in that case, y will be 0. And we are talking about the positive integral solutions. Okay, let's move. Easiest of TSD. Is any problem in this question? Yes, Siddharth, it was an easy question. Question number 30th. Okay. Abhi Manu in Namit. At the farewell party of class X, every student in the class exchanged his or her photograph with every other student. If a total of 6006 photographs were exchanged, how many students were present at the party? Let us say there were X people. Every pair is exchanging photographs between themselves. So how many pairs are possible? Can you say XC2? You are selecting any two out of X. So how many pairs are possible? XC2. Corresponding to every pair, there are two photographs. I am giving you my photograph. You are giving me your photograph. So I am multiplying this by 2. And this expression is given as 6006. That is the total number of photographs. Now what is xc2? It will be x into x minus 1 upon 2. 2. Now you can solve it. You will get the value of x. Is it okay? Abhimanyu and Namit. Easy one.
and okay, let us move. Question number 43rd. Yes, any, any problem in this question? Okay. Question number 47. Yes, Shubhangi, I'll come to that. Let me complete this PPT first of all. Uh, yes, all of you, question number 47 set. I don't remember the question number. Uh, it has two solutions. So all the answers are changed. Uh, only first question answer is changed. Otherwise, in both the cases, other two questions have the same answer. These two cases are, we have ground floor. We have first floor. And we have second floor. The first thing is, the first solution is, on ground floor, E and he has a cow. And B on the first floor, parrot. A dog. Second floor, D rabbit. That is a solution which is mentioned in the explanation. C horse. Now coming to second solution. One of the students has reported, so it will be E, cow, C, horse, A, rabbit, D, dog, and B is parrot. The spread is parrot. These two solutions are possible. Uh, based on these two solutions, only the first question which was who stays on the first floor. Its answer is changed. Otherwise, remaining two questions have the same answer. What were the remaining two questions? 48th question was who owns the cow? As you can see in both the cases, he owns a cow. And second question was who owns a horse? Answer is C in that case. Is it okay? is coming to 31 and 32. I think many of these students have problem in this. They just start with 31st question. I have data with me. How many distinct real values can x take? x raised to power 6. See, of course, this is not possible to calculate a equation of degree 6. But as you can see, x5 is missing, x cube is missing, x is missing. So I can consider x square as y. It will become y cube minus 4y square minus 17y plus 60 is equal to 0. Now, we want to solve this cubic equation. We can go by it and try it. I'll put the value of y as 1, which is not satisfying this. I'll take 2, I'll take 3, and so on. We go by it and try it. We'll get one root, then we'll divide the expression by that root, that factor, then we can solve this equation. The other thing we could do was, we can see the product of roots here, 60. Now 60 can be written as 3 into 4 into 5. That was just a manipulation, 3, 4, 5. Now what is the sum of roots here? 4. So if we manipulate them, we'll get minus 3, 4 and minus 1. It's sum of roots I'm getting as 4 or we can take 3, 5 and minus 4. That is a thing I think and uh, now uh, sum of roots taken 2 at a time that we can verify which is which I am getting as minus 17 only. That is the only thing we could do in this sum otherwise it didn't try that is the only thing. Is it okay? So my equation will become y plus 4 by minus of minus 4 
y minus 3 y minus 5 is equal to 0 so y can be 4 3 sorry minus 4 3 and 5 now what was y y was x square so x square can be plus minus root 3 plus minus root 5 and plus minus square root of minus 4 it is not a real value because it will be iota which is an imaginary number so we are left with four distinct roots is it okay shubhangi siddharth and bhavya we have a formula only for quadratic we do have formula to solve uh, uh, cubic and biquadratic equations but we don't use yes now coming to question number 32 32 question was the sum of four natural numbers is 305 there are four numbers a b c d c the sum is given as 305 now the important part the ratio is given 2 is to 3 3 is to 4 4 is to 5 5 is to 6 8 is to 9 and 15 is to 16 now you can see 15 here if you can see 15 here, you can uh, relate this 15 to any multiple of 5. You can see a multiple of 5 here, here. So if we club these ratios, I'm taking 15 is to 16. If I club these ratios, 6 is to 5, I'm trying to make it 15. So I'm multiplying the lower ratio by 3. You can uh, multiply or divide any ratio. But you can not add up or subtract anything. It will change the value of the ratio. Now, it will become 15, 18. So, my three numbers will be 18, 15 and 16. I'm taking the ratio here, 18, 15 and 16. Now, I'm taking this 4 is to 5. Now, if we take 15 is to 18, I'm not getting 4 is to 5. If I take 15 is to 16, I am not getting 4 is to 5. It means there is another number, which is the fourth number, which is giving you this ratio, 5 is to 4. Again, I'm multiplying this by 3. So, it will become 18, 15, 16, and 12. So, these many numbers are possible. Since ratio is known, I'm, I can consider those numbers to be 18x. <coughs> Abhimanyu, please be attentive. See, what I'm telling you, is to 16 is given this is one ratio of two numbers now if I take this 5 15 is a multiple of 5 that's why I'm trying to club these ratios so I'm considering another ratio which is 5 is to 6 or 6 is to 5 we can write I'm trying to club them I'm trying to make the same number I want to take a compounded ratio here compound ratio here so I'm multiplying the whole ratio by 3 so it will become 18, 15, 6 3s are 18, 5 3s are 15. Now 15, 15 same, that's why we can club these ratios. I'll get 18, 15 and 16. We have one more ratio, 4 is to 5. As you can see again, a number 5 here. I'm trying to make 5 is to 4. Now again, I'm multiplying this ratio by 3. So it will become 15 and 12. So all the four numbers will be 18 is to 15 is to 16 is to 12. Now you can verify. I am getting a ratio 2 is to 3. Are we getting a ratio of 2 is to 3 or 3 is to 2? Yes, we are getting. This is 3 is to 2. Yes, we are getting 3 is to 4. Are we getting any 3 is to 4 ratio here? Yes, all of you. <coughs> this is 4 is to now 4, 4 is to 5 we have used, 5 is to 6 we have used, 15 is to 16 we have used, we are left with 8 is to 9 ratio. Are we getting 8 is to 9 ratio? Yes. 18 is to 16. It means all the numbers are in this ratio. Now we can consider those numbers to be 18x, 15x, 16x plus 12x which is given as 305. You can calculate the value of x now. Is it okay with you, all of you? <coughs> okay.
Okay, let us move. Yes. No, Shubhangi, I think there is a calculation problem at your end. Please check it again. We'll get the same answer. Let me complete this PPT first of all, Siddharth. Question number 56. Any problem in this? Okay, let us see. There is a story given 38 fruit, apple, oranges, plum and guava. They are distributed among A, B, C, D, four persons. Okay, we'll make a table. given fruits are given their names are apple and then we have orange then we have guava then we have apples sorry plums and the total thing is also given there are four persons a b c d let the fifth column is of total now we are substituting the values each one gets a minimum of one fruits of each type and a maximum of four fruits of each type. Important line, we cannot use any number except these numbers. One, two, three, four. These are the only numbers I can use in the whole table except the total column. There are 12 apples. Total number of apples are 12. There are two female, each of whom has the highest number of fruits. It means there are two highest and there is a person D who has three plums. Further, D has five fruit less than the person who has the highest number of fruits. It means D should have highest minus five. <coughs> Again, A has four apples and four plums and does not have the lowest number of fruits. B has an equal number of apple, oranges and guava. B has an equal number of apple, oranges and guava. And uh, there is one more line that is C has an equal number of oranges, guavas and plum. Oranges, guava and plum. We'll uh, put the same number here. Is it okay? That is a thing we are given. Is it okay with you? Yes, guys, that was the thing that was given. Now let us start the total. The total should be 38 always because the total number of fruits were 38. Now, of course, we cannot use a zero here. We already has three fruits and three places are vacant. So, of course, D will have at least one of apple, one orange and one guava. <coughs> so, D will have at least six fruits. Is it okay with you? So D can have six, seven, eight, nine, and so on fruits. Now coming to the highest part. This condition was given that D has highest minus five fruits. In that case, highest will be 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 and so on. There are two persons who have the highest thing. So it will be 11, 12, 13, 14 and so on. Now one person is remaining. Now the total fruits were 38. If I take the very first case, the total comes out to be 28. So the remaining th thing will be 10. 
Is it okay? Now this will be what? 12 plus 12 plus 7. That is the second case we are taking. 31. So it comes out to be 7. Now coming to the third case. 13 plus 13 plus 9. Which comes out to be 35. So we are left with 3 fruits. Are you getting me or not guys? Of course. Are you getting me? Sorry, 13 plus 13 plus 8. I took 9. 13 plus 13 plus 8. That will be, in this case, it will be, how come I start with 11? Highest is 11, Bhavya. Why? Because we are starting with D. And this is mentioned in the direction. D has highest minus 5. If D has highest minus 5, highest will be D plus 5. Is it okay, Bhavya? Yes, all of you? Okay. Now, if I take the second case. 12, 12, 7, 7. As you can see, A already has 8 fruits. And we don't have 8 or more than 8 number in the second case. That's why it has to be 12 in this case. Is it okay? Here I'm considering D as 7. Clear? Now, if this is 12, 1 of B and C has to be 12. Let us take at random, C is having 12 fruits. If C is having 12 fruits, now orange, guava, plum has the same number. They can be what? It can be 1, 1, 1. But in that case, apple will be more than 4, which is never possible. That was a basic condition. We cannot use except 1, 2, 3, 4. Any number except 1, 2, 3, 4. <coughs> Again, if we take 2, 2, 2 here, it will be 6. Again, not a possible case. If we take 3, 3, 3. We'll get a 3 here. Again, not a possible case because I'm reading that line once again. That was C has an equal number of oranges, guavas and plums only. Only was written. That's why we cannot take the same thing. Is it okay? If we take 4, 4, 4, it will be a 0. Again, not a possible case. That's why this second case is rejected. Is it okay with you? Yes, guys, please confirm. We are going by hit and trial only. I have taken the second case, which was not possible. Now, that was a wrong case. If we consider the third case as well, it will be rejected. So, we are left with only the first case where D is having 6 in total. So, D is having 6. Now, I'm writing the correct solution in, uh, in the pink color. So, it has to be 1, 1 and 1. That is the only possibility. <coughs> A has to be 11. Already 4 and 4, 8 fruits are consumed. That's why we are left with 3 fruits. We cannot use 0. That's why we can use 1 and 2. It can be either way. 1 orange, 2 guavas or 2 oranges, 1 guava. Now, 1 of B and C will have 11 fruits. Let us consider B is having 11 fruits. Are you getting me, guys? Now, if B is having 11 fruits, it can be this way. Now, for C, there are 10, 10 fruits in total. Now for 10, you will write the solution. Is it okay? There are four possibilities. B and C, these two columns should be interchanged. They can be interchanged. And orange and guava, they can be interchanged. That's why we are getting four cases. Is it okay, guys? Yeah. 
is okay let's move now that was a very good set a good question based on binary system we had uh, approximately the same set in last year cat so let us see the boys and the girls in a school are given grades in binary on three parameters academic cultural and sports the grades are represented as a string of three binary digits where the first digit represent grades in academics the second represent cultural activities and the third represent sports further a strange phenomena is noticed in the grade now this was important line the number of boys with grades a b c is exactly equal to the number of girls with grades a c b where a b c are binary digits the table below shows the number of boys and girls who received the respective grades on two perimeters the blank data has been intentionally removed then there were questions for example i have picked one question 63rd how many boys scored one in academics so let us see there are three perimeters they are zero see uh, we are using binary we have three places first one is academics second one is cultural activities and third one is sports so how many possibilities are here to write a binary number of course there are eight possibilities because for every place there are two possibilities 2 into 2 into 2 that comes out to be 2 cube which is 8 so it can be 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 One zero zero. <coughs> Then we have one one zero, one zero one, zero one one, one one one. Are you getting me, guys? Then we have boys. And girls. Now see, coming to question. will uh, make use of that line that is important the number of boys with grades a b c is equal to the number of girls with grades a c b it means you are keeping the first digit same b and c they are interchanging their place it means what if we take 001 code and 010 code see i'm taking the first digit same and i'm interchanging the places of second and third place there in these two codes number of boys and girls are same so if we if we consider these two things if there are a boys there will be a girls if there are b girls there will be b boys you got that that was the key thing in this set because the set is very easy now is it okay <coughs> clear again if i take this 0 0 i'm keeping the first digit same and interchanging the last two places i'll get a 0 0 only it means what number of boys and number of girls are same in code 000 similarly in triple 1 it will be y y are you getting me guys Siddharth, what is the thing given? See again, I'm reading that line. <coughs> the line was the number of boys with grades A, B, C. Let me use another board. Say the grades are zero, zero, one. 
we are talking about boys and girls the number of boys with grades a b c equal to the number of girls with grade a c b now what what will be a c b it will be 0 1 0 in this number of boys are equal to in this number of girls that's why if i consider x boys in this i will get x girls in this y boys in this y girls in this they both are same actually is it okay now siddharth so if we take 101 and 110 Again, I'm keeping the first digit same. Academics is same always. These two places are interchanged. So if I take Z here, Z here, W, W. <coughs> is it okay? Now if I take triple zero, triple zero, first places I'm taking same. These two are interchanged. Uh, in uh, result, we'll get the same code. That's why I'm taking it as A, A. Number of girls and number of boys will be same in this case. Is it okay with you? Now I'm taking again 1, 1, 1. That will be the same thing, B, B, with the same logic. See, six things are done. Now we are left with this thing. 1, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1. If I take 1, 0, 1, you can compare that 1, 0, 1 with that I have taken, I think, 1, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1 is done. 0, 1, 0 is done. Then we are left with 1, double, 0. Again, it will be C, C. Why so? Again, I'm keeping the first digit same. I'm interchanging them. That's why it will be DD with the same logic. Is it okay? Yes, guys. That was the key thing. That was the crux of the dot line. Is it okay? Now, coming to the table once again. If you see the table, you have PDF copy with you. Under boys, cultural and sports. I mean, academics is not mentioned here uh, under boys category. Cultural and sports, we don't have anything here. Cultural and sports, number of boys will be 80. So I'll consider all the things which are ending with 01. You can take 001. You can take 101. It means x plus z that is given as 80. Is it okay? Then coming to once again to table 1 and 1. Academics is again not mentioned 1 and 1. The number which are ending with 1 and 1, number of boys are 50. <coughs> so I'll take 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 1. B. D. B plus D is given as 50. Similarly, we have data for girls as well. Uh, now, there was a question. How many boys scored 1 in academics? How many boys scored 1 in academics? See, we are getting a 1 here. 1. 1. 1. And a 1. We want to calculate the total number of boys in this category. So it will be Z plus W plus B plus C. If we calculate the whole stuff in this manner, we'll get many equations. By using two equations out of those equations, we can get the value of Z plus W plus B plus C. Is it okay, all of you? Yes, guys. Siddharth, now is it okay? That was a difficult set to explain. Okay, that was the last set of the AR. Now I think Bhavya, 
you are comfortable in AR because I have taken a lot of time in explaining AR of this paper. AR was pretty good in this paper. Yes, now coming to another doubt. Question number six, Bhavya. Very, very easy. See, question number six says, a series X1, X2, I mean, terms are given and so on up to x10 is given as 1 we want to calculate the value of x91 but i don't remember what is the question number 6 of data that I have explained question number two let us come to question number four a triangle number counts the objects that can form an equality triangle means this is an equality triangle so one plus two three now this is a triangular number if we consider this it will be one plus two plus three it will be a 6 which is a triangular number we are going by definition of triangular number so any number is called a triangular number if it is of the sigma n form now a triangle number counts the object that can form an equilateral triangle for example 6 is a triangular number given that p is a prime for what value of p is 8 p plus 1 a triangular number i'll take values the values given are p is given as 13 so if I calculate 8p plus 1, it will be 8 into 13 plus 1, which comes out to be 105. Now I want to calculate whether 105 is a triangular number or not. We can go by hit and trial or we can equate that as n into n plus 1 divided by 2 because that is the formula for sigma n. If we get an integral value of n, I mean a positive integral value of n, then this is acceptable otherwise not. Is it okay? Yes, Siddharth, I've explained question number 8 as well. I think you came late. It's better you listen to the uh, recorded uh, video of this session. Yes, any other question that I have not explained? Bhavya, okay. Coming to your doubts now. 40th. I'm so sorry, Bhavya. I don't have data for this question. Question number 17. 17 Siddharth, once again, I'm sorry. I've explained this question in a better way. Again, you should go to YouTube to watch this video. Okay. Any other thing we are left with? you just go through the explanation part and uh, you have uh, the PDF copy with you if you still have problem then I'll explain but I don't have data for this question question number 19 the sides of a triangle of area 6 are in AP if the sides have integer length what is the length of the longest side now area is 6. If we go by hit and trial, the only thing that comes to the mind is 3, 4, 5. Area is 6 here. And uh, what is the thing asked? Length of the longest side, which is 5 in this case. Otherwise, we have to apply maximum and minima in this case. Abhimanyu and uh, Abhimanyu, yes. We will... Uh, not have 24th workshop 
but we will upload the analysis session it will not be a live session it will be a recorded session only no siddharth this is not mentioned here otherwise this is always true in this case otherwise you have to take the whole stuff a minus d say a a plus d its area is given now you can apply the area formula now you can apply heron's formula here and equate that to 6 you will get an equation in a and d then you will apply that uh, maxima minima thing then you will get the value yes it has heron's formula because i don't know whether how to find if we take a general triangle consisting a minus d a a plus d sides we don't know uh, what is the height here because we are not considering it uh, it to be a right angle triangle is it okay but where we do have doubt sessions here you come to bulls eye any time okay guys that's it for today i think all the doubts i have taken thank you so much have a good day